Hey everybody, it's really good to be with you again for another midweek devotional. So last Sunday, near the end of the service, Pastor encouraged us all to take that godly given love that we have and think about some others that might be near us in our lives and share that love with an individual or individuals, kind of whoever the Lord was going to put on our heart at that time. So I thought I would start this by giving you almost an update on how my week has been going on that front. Um, it's kind of almost like a little testimony, to be honest with you. I challenged myself to be kinder and share some of that godly love with some of my coworkers. And I quickly realized that it was going to be harder than what I had expected. So when Monday came around, I hadn't given a lot of thought as to what approach I was going to take. You know, I might have had a little bit of prayer where I ask God for guidance, you know, and, and support through the process. But I really had no idea of what was going to be happening. So as I sat at my desk early on Monday, guess what? No ideas came to me on how I could step out of my normal routine and do something in a kind or loving manner for the Lord. And as the day went on, the hours ticked by and still nothing. You know, I got to the point where I was three quarters of the way through my work day and I still had not done anything out of my normal routine. So I was starting to feel a little bit of pressure when all of a sudden the thought came to me that I needed to just stand up, walk downstairs, go to the vending machine and purchase a couple candy bars. So I did that and I returned and I handed them over to a couple other employees. And of course, you know what candy does to people. It came with it, some smiles and um, some positive energy, you know, nothing negative. Now I didn't have to have any in-depth conversation or anything like that, but it was a good start and after I did that you know I felt I felt pretty good about what had happened um, so then we get to Tuesday and Tuesday started out very similar to Monday I didn't know what I was gonna be doing on Tuesday how I would get out of my normal routine to show somebody that special love and kindness and it went on and on hours ticked away once again and finally I got down to my last hour of the work day when once again it just kind of you know that a uh, good feeling came over me and it was made aware to me that I just needed to take a few minutes and turn to the Lord in prayer concerning my co-workers so I did just that. You know, I carved out three to five minutes, probably a little, a little break. And I went to the Lord in prayer and it was solely about um, these employees that had been on my heart, um, who I wanted to share this love and kindness with. And it was an in-depth prayer. It was sincere. And when I was done, I felt great about what had just happened. So that gets us to today. And today was unlike Monday and Tuesday in one big way. The other two days I had to wait until nearly the end of my day before that opportunity came about for me to do something where today that opportunity presented itself in the very first hour that I was at work. So traditionally there's an employee that I talk to for, oh, I don't know, a few three, five minutes um, in the morning, just kind of talk about the night before, whatever, just small talk. 
And as I'm talking to this employee, I thought to myself, well, I should invite the other employee, you know, kind of the one that's been, been on my heart lately to, to be kinder to. So I invited, I invited that employee over to be a part of the conversation, you know, to be um, accepted into the group. And, and I think that it went really well. I think that that, that individual was happy. Um, I know I was happy and I walked away afterwards um, ecstatic. So, you know, I wanted to share those opportunities with you um, because it's not like uh, I'm out there moving mountains or anything like that, but what I have noticed over the last few days is I've noticed some healthy progress and I wanted to really use this opportunity, like I said, as a testimony to give thanks to God for opening up those doors and those opportunities for me and for allowing me to walk through those doors. And it's really been exciting and I'm looking forward to seeing what the Lord has in store for tomorrow and Friday and the days after that. So with that being said, um, I hope that all of you, when Pastor gave that invitation to reach out to others who might be needing some of that special love from above, that you took that seriously, that you didn't let that invitation slip away from you. Because there really is some great opportunities and blessings there to be found and if you have maybe let it slip away from you, the good news is that um, tomorrow's another day. You know, as long as the good Lord has the sun come up and opens our eyelids and, and has our hearts still pumping, comes a day of opportunities for us. And tomorrow I encourage you all to take advantage of it and to follow through on pastor's invitation to us all and try to find somebody around you somebody who's crossing paths in your life who could use a little bit of that godly love and share it with them and I promise you won't regret doing that mm -hmm. so speaking of sharing mm -hmm. I wanted to share with you all a scripture from mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2 mm -hmm. If you have your Bibles, mm -hmm. please go ahead and turn mm -hmm. there. And it's in that chapter 2 where we hear about the day of Pentecost. The day when the Holy Spirit descended down upon the disciples to deliver them with some aid and some comfort. And we... Many of us know how the disciples then, they, they went to the streets in Jerusalem preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in numerous different languages. Now, the first scripture I'd like to share with you is verse 37. And what I think is really neat about this verse is to listen to what the reply is of that audience who was listening to Peter and the other disciples as they shared with them the gospel. So this is Acts chapter 2 verse 37 where it says, Now when they heard this, these are the new believers, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? You know, that's what it sounds like when Jesus reaches out to someone and flips their life right side up. You know, when, when we live a life without Jesus, we're kind of living a life that's upside down. Um, you know, we're doing the wrong things, we don't see the right things. 
we're not hearing the right things. And once Jesus becomes a part of our lives, we start to understand things much more clearer. And believers understand that the life that they once were living prior to Jesus was not a life that they probably should have been leading. And there were things in that life that they like to do differently now. And there's a realization now that with Jesus, there's a new way to live, a new life to live, a life in the Lord. And when, when you have the excitement of being a new believer, a lot of times you want to get off on the right foot. And you're going to ask a question like, um, what do we do now? You know, what's the next step? How can I take this greatness that I now have and grow off of it and keep projecting into the right direction? After a believer uh, kind of asks those questions, we see the reply from Peter in verse 38 where he says, Repent and be baptized in the name Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. So, you know, that's a that's salvation right there for those individuals. And after the believer joins God's kingdom, they begin an important part of their life, a life where the window opens up for spiritual growth. And that can be uh, that can be some personal growth for individuals, and that can be growth within a church community, which is, which is very important to be a part of. So now I'm going to skip some verses here, and I'm going to go further down into Acts chapter 2, where we hear about how some of these new converted believers are adapting into the church. Um, and like I said, which is really important, a new believer needs to get rooted into the church. So these next verses, they do a good job of outlining what are some things a believer can do within the parameters of a church community to find growth. And I'm going to start reading in Acts chapter 2, verse 42 there it says and they continued steadfastly all right and when it says they this is those new believers and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from the house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. We just heard lots of good things we can be doing to achieve growth within God's kingdom and also achieve growth within our small church community at Valparaiso Baptist Church. One of those ways was to continue in the doctrine. You know, I don't think it's any secret to a believer how important doctrine is, how important this Holy Bible is, and what are the things that we're supposed to be doing. So it's really important for us to hear the doctrine, to learn the doctrine, to live that doctrine out in our life, and to share the doctrine with others. Um, that's how the next generations, one of the ways that the next generations are to hear the good news of Jesus Christ is by sharing the doctrine with others and continuing it on. Another way to achieve growth is to 
prioritize fellowship with one another. And it also said to praise God and seek favor with all people. So those are all great ways that lead to church growth. But there's one way that I'd like to touch a little bit further on and go a little bit more in depth. And that was the example in verse 45. And I'll read that again. It, it says that they, as in the believers, they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So that gets us right back on topic with sharing, doesn't it? And it opens our eyes to a level of sharing that practically, you know, I think has, has become extinct. You know, I, in my life, I have not seen an individual uh, go all in to that degree where they they sell all their possessions for the good of the church and take that leap of faith um, for the church. So, as I think about that, I can't help but wonder if maybe over the years, if believers and churches have become more and more diluted when it comes to sharing and giving up the resources that God has provided them with. Um, one example would be our association. Our association has consistently been losing more and more finances from its churches. And I was just speaking with Pastor Ken, had a really good conversation with him the other day, and he told me that our church once was the leading church in the area for giving to the association. And I thought to myself, boy, wouldn't that be great if we could get back to that level? If we could get back to the point where we're helping provide for a group that is standing churches up in the area. A group that is coming to the aid of churches when they're hitting rock bottom and then they're at their, their lowest time and they're really in need. You know, the association helps churches in numerous ways. So it's, it's a special group for us to support, and especially our stance as our church, the association has done a lot for us in the last year, year and a half. We went through some tough times and we called upon the association and they answered that call and came to our aid. So I think it'd be great if we could get back to, you know, really giving like we, we should to the association or, or as they're deserving of. But we always need to be looking for ways to share and give to others. Our church has been so blessed and it's important to pass those blessings on to others. And there are so many other ways for us to do that. I think that one of the most basic ways that we can share with others is to extend a hand of forgiveness. All right? That's something that our Savior Jesus extended to each and every one of us, right? A hand of forgiveness. And we, in turn, we are able to do the same thing to others when we've done wrong or when they've done wrong to offer a hand of forgiveness. We never know who is going to walk into our life. We don't know who may walk through the doors of the church. And they're looking for that hand of forgiveness. They're looking for that refuge from a rough world. Also, 
sharing our facilities is another great way to help others and minister. Take for instance the parsonage. Since I've been attending our church, I've noticed um, numerous individuals come in. They normally don't stay too long, but they come in, they need a place to stay for a little while, and, and we we open up the parsonage to them. And I think that it has been a great blessing for our church, and it has led to uh, receiving greater blessings. It's sharing from our abundance from God and sharing that with others. And that should be important for us to do when the opportunity arises. Also, speaking of facilities, just last week we had Refuge Church in Couts. They came to use our baptistry. And what an honor for our church to be a help to another church who is baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, that's that's what we're here for, right? As a church, that's what we should be ready to help out with and aid at all costs. And I think it's kind of interesting. Did you know that that same church, Refuge Church, they're the ones that shared with us their drum kit that Max has been playing on Sunday mornings. So the Lord's Church, it's much bigger than than simply Valpo Baptist. And it feels good and right, in my opinion and to me, that we establish healthy connections with the surrounding churches in our area when the opportunity arises. Churches should share with one another and they should be they should be there to help one another if, if one's going through a rough time. Be able to lean on one another if if necessary. So whether we realize it or not, we are to be of one accord with other Christ believing churches. So when those opportunities, when they reveal themselves to us to help and be part of the growth of other believers, we can embrace those opportunities and we can embrace the idea of sharing and working together and growing with others. So that's all I had for you. I'd like to end by saying thank you for coming and listening and go out and have fun sharing the good things that the good Lord has provided you with.